ready to get started. By golly, this one looks like no exception. Hello again, everybody. Lance Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside, and we're ready for a whale of a championship Whoa. wrestling. Championship wrestling named right today. Got to tell you, we have not one, but count them, two title matches coming up. Brand new Mid-America title holder, Tracy Smothers, going to be defending that bar here today. That tickles me today. And not only that, fire and flame under the stipulation, they want to show up on TV. They have to defend the Southern Tag titles. They're going to do that again today, too. So two title defenses coming what up. What an interesting situation that is. Plus, we've got some other action, too. And for the first time, Davey, we're going to be seeing Kenny D's and the Killer right here on Championship Wrestling. We're going to take time out, try to get it all in. Be back with our opening bout coming up in just a moment. Such a big, busy day, and by golly, I'm glad we're going to start it off with a young man that I got to tell you. We are so delighted that things worked out the way they did. Let me put it this way. Here's the new Mid-America heavyweight title holder, Tracy Smothers. Tracy, son of a gun, I got to tell you, we are so tickled for you. I know everybody in Springfield, Tennessee has got to be happy, but nobody's happier than you are. No, nobody can be happier than me. That's got to be the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I know it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me in wrestling. No and question about it. And uh, I'm, I'm curious about this. Uh, up to now, you've been kind of another wrestler, if you'll forgive me putting it that way, and, and there hadn't been a whole lot of attention. Now you're the Mid-America champion. You got the title. How's it feel to have all the attention <laughs> directed to you? Well, it definitely feels different, but you know, Lance, there's, some, there's one thing, you know, that I'm not really used to. Um, Eddie Marlin was just talking to me. There's a lot of guys calling and are wanting a shot at the Mid-America title. Sure. They want the Mid-American champion, and that's me. And, you know, I'm not really used to that. It's a different kind of feeling. But, uh, doggone it, I'm ready. You know, I, I told you that I felt like it was my time. Yep. And it was my time. Son of a gun if it wasn't. Yeah, and uh, it certainly wasn't easy. God, I feel like a Timex watch. You know, you just keep a licking, but you keep on ticking. Yeah, I, I tell you, it, it's a kind of an interesting thing, too, that, and with all situations, I don't care whether it's golf or baseball or what it is, there's got to be a little element of luck in there. You did have some circumstances where it came out right for you, and you got to have it to be a champion. It's tough to get the title, but son of a gun, how tough it is to keep it, huh? You're telling me. But I'll tell you, Lance, I am the Mid-American champion, and all these guys that want a shot at me, all they got to do is put their name on the dotted line and do like they say on the Price is Right. Come on down. Well, I tell you what, I'm tickled to, to see that we're going to start it off with a Mid-America title shot right here today. Tracy, we appreciate that because we saw him right when he first got started in championship wrestling, and he's going to have a defense right here on uh, championship wrestling today. Let's get on with it. Let's go to the his opponent for today. He's going to be the, the uh, shortest lived champion around. I'm going to beat him right now, one, two, three. Oh, well, yeah. that's what it's all about. Juicy Johnny, Davey. <laughs> He's got it. Let's hear what you got to say. All right. Juicy Johnny challenging for the Mid-America Championship. Juicy Johnny out of Miami, Florida, going against the champion from Springfield, Tennessee, at 228 pounds, Tracy Smothers. This is a Mid-America title championship match. One fall and a special for television 30-minute time limit. One fall, 30-minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun has it underway. Juicy Johnny, we saw him for the first time, I don't know, half a dozen weeks ago. He comes in with great confidence, and he says today, I'm going to beat him one, two, three, and take the belt off of him. Johnny is where? Out of uh, Miami. Miami, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about the Springfield, Tennessee. We've had, you know, Miami and Memphis as champions in different places like that. How many times have you ever had a champion from uh, Springfield, Tennessee? I'm I, delighted for those folks. I think Tracy's the first, as a matter of fact. Boy, you're right. We've watched, uh, watched Tracy Smothers when he was just a kid. His first match was on championship wrestling. And he's put on a little bit of weight, but uh, not enough to be overweight, certainly. Just uh, just enough to add to that rangy height he's got. Whoa, look out. Juicy Johnny came after him. Tracy took him over. Another good move. He rolled with the arm. All in all, Davey, we have 
said when we first saw Tracy that he certainly was God blessed with the natural physical size and all and the athletic ability. But one thing that we felt was that he needed a little more aggressive attitude for it. Uh, Tracy left our area, went around a lot of different ones, and, and I think that was instrumental in his picking up this additional attitude. I think that's kind of the key to his success right now. Look at that drop kick. Oh, yeah. What's a good one on him? And Juicy Johnny finds himself getting back to his feet one more time, but not for long. Shoulders are down. The count was one, and the right shoulder is up off the mat. The referee indicating uh, that's why he stopped the count. And we could see it from our vantage point. Indeed, Juicy Johnny was able to lift that shoulder. Now the shoulders are down. Again, this time it's the left shoulder he pops off the mat. Not easy to do, though. Tracy Smothers tried again. Couldn't hold him there for the three count, and Juicy Johnny's back on his feet. We're two minutes into the action. Normally, a championship match is a 60-minute time limit, but when they're on television, special arrangement. You have a special agreement with the champion and the challenger and the promoters. And in this case, the time limit is 30 minutes. And in case you got to us a little bit late today, we have two title matches on championship wrestling today. And we've got a Southern Tag match that will come up later. Mid-America title on the line right at the moment. Woo. Look at Tracy pick him up and slam him in the middle of the ring. Whoa, look out, Tracy. Mistake there. Ah, one by Juicy Johnny, though. He did exactly the same thing, and this time Tracy Smothers grabbed that left arm and pops him down to the mat. Got to be tempting, even for a wrestler like Tracy who follows the rules strictly. Got to be tempting with uh, Juicy Johnny with that very long hair, especially since he's hair pulling, to just grab a handful and yank him down to the mat. Whoa. He left to the midsection. Tracy Smothers down to the mat. What's Johnny doing? He's, he's got a brace that he had covered up with a standard knee pad, but looking at that brace, looks like it's got metal on it in there. Oh, Tracy hangs on, kicks him back. You're right. He's got one of those big knee braces that has the metal struts down the side of it. He uncovered it, but as yet, he hadn't had a chance to use it. Back drop. Tracy Smothers, right at the moment, in control after having a scary little middle section. You see Johnny, covered count is at one and two, but at the two count, he breaks it. Tracy picks him up. Into the turnbuckle, he bounced his head right off that top one. You see Johnny, throws him into the ropes. Tracy turns, presses him down, counts one, two, he got it! Successfully defends the Mid-America title as Tracy Smothers defeats Juicy Johnny. Four minutes, six seconds the time on the championship match. Take a look at the way Tracy Smothers retained that Mid-America championship into the rope. He catches himself, turns, presses back out, and there is Juicy Johnny down to the mat. The count of three, and Tracy Smothers fell the Mid-America champion. Get the camera on me! Get it over here! I'm sick and tired of you talking about how great Tracy Smothers is! Okay, That's come on, J.D., now just settle down. Here, we put on this chair, because you're over the hill anyway. I'm sick and tired. Last week it was J.T. Southern, how great he was! This week, Tracy Smothers, how great he is. He's no champion. He's the champion. He's no champion. I tell you, these idiots out here, they'll believe anything you tell them. But I tell you one thing, they're smart enough to know that Tracy Smothers is no champion. I tell you what, you didn't tell the rest of the story. Let me be like Paul Harvey and tell you the rest of the story. Right, I you, didn't, you didn't tell him how Mr. Universe beat him to a bloody pulp after the match was over with. You didn't say how he hurt him, how he crippled him. I'm surprised he's here at television today. Now let me tell you one thing. What's going to be happening, Lance Russell? Tracy Smothers, your life is in danger. Mr. Universe is more than mad. I've had him in his cage all week. I haven't fed him. He's a savage. He's ready for you, Tracy Smothers. So the best thing for you to do, pack your bag and get out of town, Tracy Smothers. And that's all I've got to say about it. We're going to take him out in about 10 seconds. We aren't even going to wait for the bell to ring next week, Lance Russell. Mr. Universe, 
go to the ring and let's prove a point right now. Yeah, well, here, take your over-the-hill hat and just take it. You may be needing it before long. To the ring, we're ready for our next match, Dave. David Johnson out of Memphis, Tennessee, weighs in at 203 pounds. Mr. Universe with J.D. Costello in his corner, 285 pounds. An awesome wrestler, Mr. Universe. He does, in fact, have great power. <laughs> David Johnson hammered with that big telephone pole broad arm across the back. J.D. Costello talking about Tracy Smothers. I, in all fairness to David Johnson, you are not talking about uh, Don't even the talk same about type David wrestler. Johnson. You talk about the universe because he is the wrestler in the ring that matters. Like it or not, you're seeing the next Mid-America champion right there, Lance Russell. Yeah, listen, what Davey was trying to say, and he's absolutely right. With all due respect to Davey, he's no, I mean, to David Johnson, he's nowhere near as big as Tracy Smothers. Oh, come on, Lance Russell. We have the distinction of doing what we say we're going to do. And Tracy Smothers is in serious trouble right now. Well, J.D., I'm fond of reminding folks that that's why the match is going to take place. And whenever Mr. Universe climbs in there with Tracy, he's going to find that that championship belt has given Smothers an excellent attitude toward facing challengers. Well, I hope he does have a good attitude because Mr. Universe is bigger than Tracy Smothers. He's got more power than Tracy Smothers. He's more agile than Tracy Smothers. And he's got me as his manager, and that's all that matters. You see what's going on in the ring right now. Drops him down with a big leg and pounds David Johnson hard, and the 285-pounder gets a one, two, three, and that's going to be it. Mr. Universe will have that, so he does have a victory over David, David Johnson, but again, your point is well taken. That is not Tracy Smothers. No, it is not. A minute 31, the time on the victory for Mr. Universe as he just uh, ran roughshod over David Johnson. He was in control all the way, and J.D. can say what he wants to, but... Uh, it was not Tracy Smothers. He's a big one. We'll see more of him. Time out now and back in just a moment. Ooh, Wednesday night action time right there at the Coliseum in Evansville, Indiana. Just looking here and four of the matches are title matches. A Mid-America title, Southern tag title, Southern heavyweight title. And listen to this, an international tag title match with Sato and Goto going against Jeff Jarrett and Pat Tanaka with the stipulation that if Sato and Goto win, Jeff Jarrett's hair will be at stake. This must have been your idea, Tojo, to come up with Jeff Jarrett's hair being at stake. Well, that, that. well that's the only way that uh, well, we, can, we can have a match with them. And I tell you what, I, I, I have a good idea and I thought it twice. And uh, because you still, because I know Jeff Jarrett, like I said, uh, Jeff Jarrett is always, always mentally. And I, I, when we get the hair on a title like this, I like to see Jeff Jarrett hair come right off because the, his head gonna be just like mine, yeah. but I gonna be much better looking than Jeff Jarrett because Jeff Jarrett is gonna be just like a retarded boy. You understand? Just like his daddy. <laughs> and then. That just like before, his daddy put his hair on a line and he, he got his hair cut. And he was so ashamed, he put the mask on day and night, day and night. He was so ugly. In fact, his wife uh, didn't like him stay at home because he was so goofy and ugly. Retired. Well, uh, one thing about it, they may be fighting just a little harder. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Every time we wrestle Pat Tanag and Jeff Jerry, we put the title on the line. They get the title match and they get wrestle me and Goto. That's a big deal for them. But we get what? We don't get nothing. We just get two punks. We don't, we don't but this nothing. time, we beat him. Well, we've been beat him so many times. But this time, Jeff Jarrett going to be a bow head. Yeah, well, don't forget. Yeah, they, look at this. They, uh, I, I, come on now. Let's take those scissors out of here. You're getting a little early with them because the match isn't over. And don't forget, they've got a win over you guys, too. So it doesn't mean that it's all one way in there. That'll be coming up Wednesday night, Evansville. you got to be down there and see that match. Boy, that was an exciting son of a gun. And I'll tell you, as awesome as this Bam Bam Bigelow is, he was going against a guy who has incredible strength. And we, in fact, are looking forward to seeing Kenny D come out here. Kenny D. 
Kenny, the manager of the Killer. Well, Kenny, the first thing I got to say is that the Killer, uh, quite an awesome specimen in uh, what we saw on the videotape that you sent in to us. But what we're looking at right now is wanting to find out a little bit about the Killer. Tell us something about it. Well, first off, Lance, let me tell you, don't worry about what these waterheads come out and say about you. You looking good from head to toe. Don't worry about nothing. You looking good, Lance. Yeah. Looking good, baby. Right away, I got to like him a little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best that did it and got away with it. And let me tell you something about the killer. You want to know a little bit about him? Yeah. A picture speaks louder than words. You know that, Lance. Don't worry about nothing. That's what the D stands for. Don't worry about it, baby. I got the killer here today. He's right around the back. He's getting ready. All these good people know he's here. And I'm finna bring him out here. And yep. as far as Larry Sharp being handcuffed to me, that's fine. That's just great because I can watch him now. He's nowhere he can go now. And it's just Bam Bam Bigelow, big bald-headed watermelon leading Bam Bam Bigelow, and my man, the killer in the ring. And let me tell you something about the killer. He's bodacious. He's outrageous. God gracious, come on out here, killer! This is Kenny D's man, the killer, and he is some specimen. Look at him, six foot two, 275, baby. The tower of power, the king of pain, right here. Bam, bam, big enough. You want some of this? You must be mentally disturbed, baby, because this is the man with the plan. Can you get a zoom up on some of these thunder cookies right here? Check them thunder cookies out, baby. Check them out. That's what's in store for Bam, bam, big well, I'll tell you one thing. There's no question about it. He's got the physical makeup in order to give Bigelow as big as he is a go for the money. That's the killer right oh, there. Yeah. We he's, want we he's want to much. see him in action. I noticed you got a handicap match today. Yeah, uh, he's Kenny. too much for, to be in one man. He should have been born twins. He's too much. Get them two wrestlers out here. Let's see what they got. Put my man in the ring. Okay. Get him out in the ring. Kenny D and the killer heading to the ring, and we're ready for our next piece of action, which will be... A handicap match with uh, the killer going against two men, Dave. All right. Two men in the ring right now, the Red Demons and uh, referee Jerry Calhoun also now in the ring. Kenny D with the killer at ringside as a killer steps up on the apron through the ropes. And this handicap match about to get underway. It's going to be a one fall 10 minute time limit match. Referee says, let's get it going. Two against one. The Red Demons against the Killer. The Killer. Take notes, take notes, baby. It's going to take place. Two men, ten minutes, ten minutes. One under each arm he's got there. He is a physical specimen, isn't he? <laughs> well, I tell you what. He's got some strength in those arms. You see, they, they weigh at about 220 apiece. He just runs them together right there. Now he's got one of them. Puts him under the rope. Oh, hit him with a big, big, powerful clothesline as he came off of there. Now he grabs the other, fires him into the rope, picks him up, and power slams him down to the mat. Kenny D is excited. There's a count of three. There's a one, two, three. And that's it. 46 seconds the time of it. Kenny D, D stands for don't worry about it. He didn't have to worry about that one too much because in less than a minute, the killer gets the victory over both of the Red Demon. And he used, he used exactly what uh, you would expect him to, that power, that pure animal strength that he has in there to win that handicap match. Some kind of a go. The killer will take time out. Be back in just a moment. friend to tell you about the action first out of town they will give you the entire card uh, coming into the coliseum wednesday night saturday august the 23rd springfield tennessee the center is where the action is going to be at friday october the third that's october the third coming up in clarksville tennessee at the northwest high school more on that later on now wednesday night evansville at the coliseum opening up it'll be the mod squad with jd costello going against jt7 and david haskins tracy smothers will be defending that mid-america 
America title that he won in the tournament against Mr. Universe, a Southern tag title with no disqualification titles in the mask of Fire and Flame against Giant Hillbilly and Paul Diamond, then a Southern heavyweight title with the killer and the big muscles challenging Bam Bam Bigelow, Kenny D, the manager of the killer, handcuffed to pretty boy Larry Sharp, and the final match, international tag titles against Jeff Jarrett's hair with Jeff and Tanaka against Sato and Goto. It's the team of Sato and Goto. They've got the international belts with a non-title match coming up here. Tojo Yamamoto with a kendo stick over in their corner. Their opponents are in the ring, so is the referee, and we're just about set to go. Their opponents today, both out of Mississippi, Jerry Garman, Benny Trailer. Jerry and Benny weigh in at a total weight of about 423 pounds. Sato and Goto out of Tokyo, Japan, and their total weight, right around 450 pounds. They weigh about 225 each. Goto starting it off for his team. That's Jerry Garman in there. Garman hit by Akio Sato. After the Japanese team makes the tag, Sato stepped on his forehead. Garman, who he had worked on. Sato makes the tag. Tarzan Goto coming back in. And Garman going after him, rolls over to the corner, gets the tag on Benny Trailer. Trailer, victim him with a headbutt. And that chop puts him down to the mat. Goto, unrelenting. What is Japanese team? They go after you and they stay after you. They don't let up. There's a tag. Here's Akio Sato, the more vicious of the two. He's the guy we call the finisher of the pair. He really knows how to get it done. Benny Trailer battling him. Dangerous place over near the Japanese corner, and he also was hitting him with a fist. The referee was trying to get that stopped. Well, there's a fist. Referee couldn't see that one, though. It was uh, on the other side. Akio Sato really hammered him. Goto chops him down to the mat. Uh, got the fist double being warned by the referee about it. Bars and Goto just chopping away. Benny Trailer, long way from the tag on his partner Jerry Garman back in the corner. Sato with a body slam on him. He sets him up, leaves him for Goto. Goto dives down on him. There's a tag made, and Akio Sato coming in. Sato holding him up. Goto comes off the rope. And that is going to be it. One, two, and three. Boy, there is no way Benny Trader was going to move from that as Goto came off the top rope. The referee's back turned. And wow, as uh, Sato had him just stretched out there, and Goto hit him. Time on it, two minutes, 19 seconds. Another win for the Japanese team. Okay, time out. We'll be back with more action in just a moment. A couple of more matches scheduled here. One of them is Bam Bam Bigelow, and of course the other one is the Southern Tag. Then we have a standby expiration of time match, which we'll see if we have time for it. Coming out right now, pretty boy Larry Sharp and the Southern Heavyweight title holder, the beast from the East, big Bam Bam Bigelow. Larry Sharp. You know, Lola's running and hiding again. I believe that he's taking his retirement seriously this time and trying to hire people like the killer and his knick-knack manager to get rid of a man like Bam Bam Bigelow. Well, that's not going to happen. And let me tell you something, Kenny Day, about being handcuffed to the pretty boy. You might as well go home and stick your fingers in the electric socket because when them cuffs get slapped on my wrist, I'm going to drag you like a redhead step in around that ring, up the rope, down the rope, and around the ring. In the meantime, killer, you saw what happened to you last time. I could see you right through that mask in the very scared eyes, begging, hoping you didn't have to come back next week. We know you wanted to be put out of commission, so you didn't have to come back and face the beast from the east. Well, it didn't happen. Law we'll put you on payroll one more week. He's hiring people for a job he can't do. Law, we want you. Come out. Face us. Be the man you're supposed to be, because the beast from the east is right. facing Championship stop, right here. Get a look at it, because we want you to be just a 
exactly what we own. People of the world, people watching television, this is the Southern Heavyweight Championship belt, and it is owned by the Beast of the East. Easy, man, man. Easy, easy. He can't wait to get in the ring. Look at him. He smells blood. He smells blood. We're Your opponents are up there, so let's go to the ring, and we're ready for the action in this handicap match, Dave. Bam Bam Bigelow. Going against two of them, David Haskins and Larry Santana. Santana and Haskins both attacking Bam Bam Bigelow. They put Bam Bam into the rope. Bam Bam got one of them with a foot and the other with his arm as he came off of there. Larry Santana hit with the right hand. David Haskins, upper arm across the back of the neck. Santana into the rope. Bigelow just stopped him cold. Here's Haskins. Bigelow runs their heads together. thrown over the ropes he was thrown into the ropes and flipped over referee didn't see it there's a cover one two three Larry Santana is pinned and Bam Bam Bigelow has the win in 55 seconds of action uh, he's steamed he's still going after him Bam Bam Bigelow with the win let's take a look at the power slam here that wrapped it up for him there's uh, Santana up in the air, and Bigelow just drives him straight down into the mat. From there, the count of three, and Bigelow with a win. Again, 55 seconds of time. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll tell you, it just makes you shudder when you see that Bam Bam Bigelow do some of the things that son of a gun can do. He is mighty, mighty powerful. What a big one indeed. Bam Bam Bigelow, the holder of the Southern uh, Heavyweight Belt. Eddie? Yeah, good. Uh, we've got a southern uh, southern tag match coming up, and I came over here. I wanted to call you out here and find out because uh, this is great. We got a mystery team every week, just like you. I want to get fire and flame out here right now. Okay, here they come, the holders of the AWA Southern Tag Championship belts, fire and flame. You know, Lance, as long as they got the titles, we'll have a title match on TV, and I'll name the opponents. They won't know who they are until they get in the ring. I see both the gentlemen here, and they got their belts. They do That's have. counts. Okay, well, they've got the belts. you got a match scheduled today right here with a mystery team. Well, I'd like to see Eddie Marinera calling the proper respect to the Southern Tag Team Champions calling us gentlemen. But still, Eddie Marlin, you think this little thing you got, this little tactic, this little dirty deal you got working is going to get rid of the Southern Tag Team Champions, brother. But you're wrong, Marlin. You bring whoever you want out here right now. As you saw last week, we run out Joe the Duke off. Crazy now the stipulations are the same, I guess. You're going to name some geek, freak, or midget, and they're going to get right in this ring, and we're going to beat the daylights out of them. <laughs> well, well that's... Come on. The men will be in the ring. Y'all get in the ring. They'll come out, and then you'll find out whether they beat them or not. I don't know. Hey, I kind of like that idea. The fire and flame climb up in there. They're not going to know who their opponents are until they arrive to climb in the ring. Here comes the referee. And he's heading to the ring, and right behind it's Bill Hickerson and the giant hillbilly. We're waiting for the referee's uh, signal to ring the bell. Oh, fire and flame out of here. Wait a minute. What is this? week he's got this Bill Hickerson out here. That man's a nut. That man, what is this? This is not no mystery. Anybody, you're crazy. Marlon just got through saying, you can go, but the belts are going to stay here. And he made it very clear to them. That the belts are staying here, and they're going to win, and if they leave, they are the loser. <laughs> that, that's pretty well clarified. Oh, my giant hillbilly, Bill Hickerson. All right, fire and flame facing a couple of big ones on the other side of the ring, too. Southern Tag Team Belts are at stake. Fire and Flame are outweighed in this match. Can you believe that? That is a rare occurrence. Hickerson, of course, is big. And then uh, the weight of the giant hillbilly is uh, so great at 420. 
Well, they're not outweighed by much. Fire and flame weighing in at about 590. Bill Hickerson. Back in a corner. Fire working on him. Oh, he's got it cut open. Bill had a, uh, had a bandage on his forehead, and Fire has ripped that bandage loose and has worked on that cut and got it opened up again. His flame coming in. All right, these guys are something else, I tell you. Fire and flame. They hold the Southern belts. They may not hold them long. They're going against Pickerson and the Giant Hillbilly here today with those belts at stake. From outside and from inside the ring, they double-team Phil Hickerson. Hickerson fired into the ropes. They're over there. He runs into the double upper arms of fire and flame. Fire covers, counts at one. That's all he gets is a one count. Hickerson still got some fight left in him. him with a head. Get it again. Dickerson cut, bleeding and staggering in the center of the ring, but still standing. Fire and flame put him into the rope. This time Phil ducks under. Look out. He takes both of them down to the mat. Here comes the giant hillbilly in. Hillbilly's got one of them. Hickerson has the other. Watch it oh, now, look baby. out. Into the chair goes Fire. It's Fire and Phil Hickerson. Down here on the floor. Phil. Wait a minute. Double count out, the referee says. Double count out. So in both, effect, of them, both of them down here on the floor. Yeah, so it's stopped. Hickerson going for the mask over here. He's got him from behind. Hickerson bleeding profusely. He's he is taking the furious. mask off. He got, he, he got it off. He got the mask off. Fire heads out of here quickly. Hickerson has the mask in his hand. Couldn't see his face. He was he left quickly. I don't want to tell you what. No disqualification with nothing. I don't want no referee. We don't want nothing. We just want to be. Okay, time. we're gonna take time out right now and we're gonna be back. The belts will stay with fire and flame on that double count out. Time out and we'll be back in just a moment. some more action you'll want to see it talking about action Wednesday night Evansville Indiana the Coliseum out of the five matches four of them are title matches and the final bout is going to be an international tag title match it'll have Sato and Goto going against Jeff Jarrett and Pat Tanaka and Tojo comes up with the idea in order to get the title match you got to put up your hair Jeff it's the first time in your career and it can be pretty scary that's right I got a young career but it's already moving along and Tell you the truth, Lance, I'm quite pretty nervous about this because this tells me one thing, that Tojo is nervous that his boys are going to lose the belts. But that also tells me that, Tojo, you're scared, brother. I know me and Pat can win these belts, and we're going to do it in Evansville Wednesday. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing that kind of action. Pat, you uh, you got to be doing a whale of a lot of battling in there, too, to save that hair of Jeff. I tell you what, Lance, I don't have any doubt in my mind that we can beat him as long as it's two on two. You know, Jeff put up his hair against this match, and it's pretty important to him. But I'm not going to let him down. So you watch it, Sato and Goto. After that, we're going to walk out with those titles in Jeff's hair. It'll be a nervous night for you, too, Jerry. Good luck to you. By golly, I'll tell you what, it should be. And then we are going to see an AWA Southern Heavyweight Championship match. Let me show you a set of muscles you won't believe on the killer and his manager, Kenny D, who will be handcuffed to pretty boy Larry Sharp at ringside. Kenny? Not worried about being handcuffed to Larry Sharp, because Larry Sharp, managers come and managers go, but Kenny D just keeps on coming, baby. And check out these 23-inch thunder cookies right here, Lance. Check them out. That's what Bam Bam Bigelow's got to deal with when we get up north. Bam Bam Bigelow! 
a little. You tough, you mighty agile. You come in the ring, jumping around, doing them little cartwheels. You look good, but you don't look good enough, baby, to stay with the killer. We're coming up there to take that belt, put it around this man's waist, and party a little bit. And baby, I know I don't have to worry about nothing when I got the killer. Wednesday night, Evansville. Would you say that things are spirited today? Huh? Yeah, I would it be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. What about it? I mean, to tell you, that Higgerson was some kind of furious. He got his head busted open, and then he did a little knocking around himself in there. Dumped fire all the way over the desk. Ends up taking his mask off. We didn't get a real good look. We were ducking chairs and everything else in there. And uh, here they come right now, back out again. Fire and flame. Let's I want to tell these people out here something, brother. Any morning, every week you come out here and you name our opponent, Shaq, and it's unknown to us, but we don't care about that. So when you go for the stipulation, Jack, that when we lose these belts, we got to take off our hoods with nobody else putting up nothing. Jack, that's not right. And in the United States of America, any morning, you would be called a scoundrel, Jack, and that's what I'm calling you. Now, Phil Hickerson, that Jack do fall hillbilly Monday night, Jack. We're going to finish what we started last week. Joe LaDuke is gone. You understand that, Phil Hickerson? You're next. But I'm going to burn you like you've never seen in your life. There's going to be a fireball on you, Phil Hickerson. And when you go back to them, that's what I want, Eddie Martin. Eddie Martin, come here. Hickerson and the giant hillbilly with a chair and a boot. And Hickerson got the hood off again, and again, fire gets out of here. Hey, hey, come on. Uh, I want everybody look at here, brother. Not one, but two. Look here. Son, you must be over again. I love it. I love pain. I strive on it. You know, sometimes I just grab people and beat them up for enjoyment, man, Joseph. But let me tell you something. Joe the Duke was a good man. You mess around. So what do you do? You go out and you get somebody bigger and stronger. And I got it, brother. So together, I want you to show up. I'm going to show everybody exactly what you look like. They got a glimpse of it today. But I want to get that mask off of you. And I want to hold it. And I want to turn it around. Blood running down his face. And I want to show him exactly what. Oh, man, I tell you what, the first right here, Lance Russell. You know what I'm going to do with it. They may bleed me out. But blame you for being upset about it and brother when they do get in the ring with fire and flame you better believe that is going to be some kind of a scramble right in there oh david we got to... <laughs> i said it was squirrely today it is squirrely today huh let's go to the ring we still got a six-man tag match partner yet to go expiration of time and we're about ready for it as if we needed more action but we got it for you. I tell you what, six-man action here as Pat Tanaka, Jeff Jarrett, and Paul Diamond will be on one side of the ring. And on the other side, the team of the Mod Squad and Ron Sexton. And you can count on J.D. Costello being in their corner as they come out here, too. A match that will go to the expiration of time. And all we got to do right now is wait for him to step into the ring, and we are underway. Here comes the referee, Jerry Calhoun. Boy, he's had quite a day here today. Woo! I got to tell you. Hey, I was looking at the little pile that was left over here by Hickerson. Two masks, two southern tag belts, and a chair. And that pretty well tells the story right there. Oh, am I here to tell you that we have ourselves one whale of a day. Tell you what, my friend, we're going to have to take time out before we get into the ring. we got a commercial to pick up here. We'll do it now. We'll be back with more action in just a moment. <laughs> Still waiting for everybody to show up for the six-man oh, match here. Right. We're about ready to get one too. Yeah, should I'm be a very good. I'm looking forward to seeing it if we can get it. It was kind of a standby match with the two title matches exactly. that we had in there. We didn't know exactly how much time we were going to have. We had as a standby, and uh, I think probably what happened is when uh, 
when it, when it all broke loose out here, maybe they said, well, they're not going to need this match today. <laughs> now we're ready, though, Dave. Let's have the introduction. All right. This is going to be to the expiration of time. On one side of the ring, at 727 pounds total weight, it's J.D. Costello and his mod squad, and their partner, Sexy Ron Sexton. Sexton out of Knoxville, mod squad out of New Orleans. And going against them, it's Pat Tanaka, Jeff Jarrett, and Paul Diamond. Their total weight, 624. Pat Tanaka out of Hawaii, Jeff Jarrett out of Nashville, and Paul Diamond from Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Referee says, all right, one on either side of the ring. And for the mod squad, it is going to be Spike starting against Pat Tanaka. J.D. Costello, you can barely get a glimpse of there, and resplendent in his, uh, in his turquoise jacket today with a rose to match. Being joined here at the uh, at the desk by hey, J.D. Hey, Brown, since Lance Russell isn't here, I thought I'd sit down here and just, uh, just help you out a little bit with this match. I know how biased you are sometimes and how much help you need. We definitely know how biased you we are, We've got a too. good match going in the ring right now. Take nothing away from Paul Diamond, Pat Tanaka, or Jeff Jarrett. But they are up against my mod squad. They are up against the most destructive team in professional wrestling today. And Pat Tanaka and uh, Jeff Jarrett and Paul Diamond all have shown themselves in matches that they are capable with going against the caliber of wrestler of J.D. and your, and your uh, mod squad and Ron Sexton. So there's no mismatch here. This match should be a good one. Uh, some kind of discussion going on with his, oh, I see, Sexton, I think maybe you should be in the corner, J.D., to keep Sexton back where he belongs in the corner, rather than over They're here with very us. experienced wrestlers, they don't need my help, they know, I've given them explicit instructions how to handle this match, as you see right now. Spike's giving them a couple of knees, well, let's Tanaka see. ducks under and puts him down to the mat, yeah, here's a cover, one. Kick out, Spike, good deal. Down to one is all he got. What a chop he hit him with. Spike. Spike's a tough man. He weighs 275 pounds. He can take it, as you see right now. He's going to make his tag to, uh, to Basher right now. Basher's going to come in, take control of the match, and we're going to win one, two, three. Here comes Jeff Jarrett. Pat Tanaka has just made a tag on his partner. So it's going to be Basher against Jeff Jarrett. I take now. nothing away from Jeff Jarrett. You know, he's developing along, but I tell you what, he's still a baby. Instead of having on tights, he should have on a diaper in the ring right now. Well, there again, J.D., he's proven in the ring that he is capable of being in there and wrestling against the best of them. See, yep. Jeff, that, he's uh, inexperienced. He doesn't know what to expect right now. He's used to wrestling uh, Soto and Gato, and right now he's up against two great big men that don't take anything off of anybody. That's true. I, I'm telling you, J.D., that uh, Spike and, and now Sexton again wandering out of the ring. It's almost like your team should be penalized for delay of game no, as no, the referee no, no, no. is spending so much time getting him back here. He's taking care of business right now, Dave. That's the difference between you and me. I'm a professional wrestling manager. I see what goes on. You stand there. You do the weather all week long. You just come up here to the TV studio to do this every week. You don't know what's going on. Oh, you've got some cavities in your false teeth there. Jeff Jarrett, what a move he put on him and a good drop kick and Basher hits the mat. Basher's over in the corner. Jeff Jarrett still standing there saying, come on back for more if you want it. What is Basher going to do? Is he going to go back to action? He's trying to get a tag on Sexton. Sexton, might want him. Sexton doesn't want to take the tag. He's up there saying, oh, let me think about Let a this. fresh man in, see what he can do. Here comes Ron Sexton. He finally did take the tag from Basher. I think Basher probably had to threaten him but to get him in there after watching what Jeff had just done to Basher. Sexton with a headlock on Jeff Jarrett. Three and a half minutes gone in this one. Match to the expiration of time. Look at that move again by Jeff Jarrett. He's over to the corner and gets the tag. And here comes the Canadian with a drop kick. Paul Diamond puts Sexton to the mat, covers him. Down to one, Sexton kicks out. Sexton jumps to his feet and headed for the corner, but he was in the wrong corner. 
Now, Ron needs to make a tag right now. We've got two fresh men in Spike and Basher, the mod squad, over in the corner. If he can get over and make a tag, I'm sure the match will be over in just a matter of seconds because uh, we've got some lethal moves that we haven't unleashed on television today, and we're fixing to do so right now, Dave. Well, I wish I could say I would look forward to that, but I don't, knowing what type moves the mod squad might unleash. Diamond had his hair pulled by Sexton. Shoulder butt coming off the rope. Paul Diamond off the ropes again. This time he's tripped up by Sexton. But Diamond is the one that ends up with the advantage as he hammers Sexton's arm up behind him. Well, there's a good move by Sexton. Got to give him that. Sexton on his feet. Paul Diamond now makes the tag, and Pat Tanaka will be coming back. Tanaka with a chop, and Ron Sexton hits the mat. Tanaka picks him up and hits him again. Tanaka in a little, little too quickly. Ron Sexton has made the tag on Spike of the Mod Squad. Now you see Spike taking control. Oh, yeah. Beautiful move, Pat Tanaka. Head rammed into the mat, then you know that hurts. Well, I gotta agree with you there, JD. Oh, yeah. Beautiful move. Spike. We've done this many times before. Spike has perfected that move. Spike has indeed turned the momentum here. Pat Tanaka body slam now. Spike making the tag on Basher. Pat Tanaka wrestling's answer to a flat tire on I-40. Tanaka hit by an upper arm. Basher drops down on him again. He's calling for the knee in the corner, and Ron Sexton obliges. And the tag is made, and Sexton will come in. As you can see, there are very few teams in professional wrestling that can stand up to Spike and Basher. Their endurance, their strength, their speed. Danaka hit Sexton across the back of the head, got to the corner, the tag on Jeff Jarrett. Jeff puts Sexton into the rope. Dumps him over the back. There's a cover, counts at one, two. Two count is all he gets, the Mod Squad interferes. I got everybody in the ring, all six of them going at each other now. Paul Diamond against Spike, Jeff Jarrett against Ron Sexton, Pat Tanaka against Basher, referee. Oh, look out, here comes the Japanese team of Sato and Goto, and that is going to be a disqualification on the team of the Mod Squad and Ron Sexton. But the kendo stick being wielded by Akio Sato against Jeff Jarrett and Pat Tanaka. Sato poking it right at Jeff Jarrett. He's choking him with it. Now here comes a little help. Garvin and Taylor and Tracy Smothers in. And with the additional people coming in to help, the team of Sato, Goto, the Mod Squad, and Sexton, all of them finally leave the area. Sexton was a little late getting out. Boy, he was scrambling, too, yeah. trying to get away from the guys that came in there. There was a case where uh, I wish the heart drive had been around. <laughs> we could have used that kind of rough and tough tactics of his. Yeah. Oh, guarantee you one thing. That's what you need when you get guys like Sato and Goto and everybody Boy, jumping action. in, interfering. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Boy, the whole day. Yeah, you're right. Well, it man, started off that man. way. You know, it started off today with uh, Tracy Smothers in here, and I, you kind of touched on it uh, when you were talking to him. It's tough enough to win a belt, and he won the Mid America title in the tournament. But maybe even tougher to defend the belt week after week. And he got off to a great start today as he was defending against. Juicy Johnny out of Miami. Now, Juicy Johnny, I, I guess with a name, uh, folks may tend to take him a little bit lightly, but he's a worthy competitor. Uh, he was in there scrapping all the way, and even before the bout got started, he went, had to walk by and say, going to be the shortest lived champion right. ever been. We're going to beat his title away. And all. But he didn't. It was uh, Tracy Smothers winning the match. Four minutes, six seconds, and Tracy Smothers is still the Mid America champion. Mr. Universe, boy, big guy here out of. Uh, out of uh, J.D. Costello's uh, stable of wrestlers uh, going against David Johnson. Just uh, totally no contest almost right. today as, uh, as Mr. Universe took the match in uh, about a minute, 31 seconds. Then it was fire and flame a little bit later on with still Ooh. another championship match. Southern heavyweight belts, on, or Southern tag team belts on the line. Same stipulations. They did not know their opponents until they got here and climbed in the ring. 
And then Eddie Marlin says, all right, we're going to send the team in here to go against you. And that team turned out to be Phil Hickerson and the giant hillbilly. Well, Fire and Flame, none too happy about that. As first. you pointed out, Dave, they outweighed Fire and Flame. You just don't hardly find that anywhere, any time. Almost never, but with the giant Ooh. hillbilly over there, they did, in fact, uh, end up with a total weight greater than Fire and Flame. What happened? Uh, Fire and Phil Hickerson were down here on the floor. Hickerson had been cut open by Fire and Flame, and Hickerson was running uh, Fire into a chair and then throwing him on the desk. Yes, he did. As all that was going on, the referee was counting. You've got a 10 count to get back in the ring they weren't paying attention to uh, to the referees count he counted 10 and that was it it was a double count out but the belts don't change hands on that situation so fire and flame still have them when you bust phil hickerson open friend he's oblivious to everything yep. else until he gets his pound of flesh and i and think uh, he did he got a pound of flesh and two masks and two masks <laughs> <laughs> he sure did his son of a god he was out here ripping masks and going after that hickerson is a tough cookie i don't always love all the tactics he uses but i gotta tell you he's a guy that when you see he interests me to see him in the ring because you know something's going to be happening. something's going to happen yeah. speaking of something happening sato and goto the international champions in here belts were not on the line but they defeated jerry garvin and benny trailer in their match bam bam bigelow in a handicap match david haskins and larry santana his opponents bam bam did win the match in a little under a minute it was the killer defeating the red demons in a handicap match and then this match just finished here. Just finished, Pat yeah. Tanaka, Jeff Jarrett, Paul Diamond win by disqualification on the Mod Squad and Ron Sexton. Speaking of being just finished, we are. We're out of time. Until yeah. next week. For Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.